run it like through Docker or no? Uh, yes, I'm going either to do it on Docker, but I, I don't know whether I have this for, like the, the whether Mary's notebook I will have in a Docker. Otherwise, I can just, I have also my uh, notebook Jupyter Docker, uh, like not do, uh, like do, Docker file. And I can run this on the, let's say, an, another server with those uh, 40 or 50 CPUs to see how it works with on the whole data set. I'm just like asking because for myself, I created a Docker image, which is basic Jupyter notebook yeah. server, yeah. right? But yeah. also with yeah. all of the spacey and sky spacey models installed. So, I mean, like all of the dependencies yeah. that are covered. So, for example, like we need to coordinate this. So now we could just uh, run Mary's code as is. We, like, we just simply forget about installation of spacing models. No, I need available. actually I, I, to, to run, uh, to run uh, Mary's notebook at all. I need uh, proper installation of everything because it's like the huge part of the whole pipeline is actually uh, this is spacey model. You need to have a both in both a spacey install and uh, together with this large model. And yeah, oh, but, that, but that's what I, what I mean. Like right, you in pre bake it in the Docker image, so there are no dependencies on this pip install and let's say your local directory where where it's. Yeah, but I'm going to do it uh, in Docker, but anyway, I mean, like I, the server I'm using to, to run. Uh, I understand it. Like, the question is, do you have already the Docker image or not? Because I have it. I have. What also. I'm saying is like, we could share this. I know, I, 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 have, I have, a no, like, I have a, a kind of Docker image I use always when I work with a notebook, with Jupyter notebook. So it's like for, I have a lot of stuff there already. So I think that I, I can run Mary's notebook without problem because most of the things we, we are using are like very popular things. I mean, spacey, uh, multiprocessing, things like that. I mean, like- it's Okay, no but if you, like, here, here's my thing. Like if you run into troubles installing SkySpace, like all, all of those models, just let me know because I dealt like, uh, what is it what the day before yesterday like i was essentially kind of dealing with that stuff which is kind of like, okay where do i get that model of all of oh, it? yeah, me, then I just yeah me too but for me mine i didn't do it like the clean or the neat way i just tried to install them any way i could to get the the code to run well, well, I mean, yeah but i mean yeah just there are some nice solutions for that yeah. not nice just like you package right. in a docker and then you don't deal with it in the code itself yeah. Um, okay. So that's the thing. Uh, so it's a section that Mary has already prepared, has already prepared, and uh, we are still waiting for uh, entire documents level and uh, sentence level. But actually, I've got now a message. I repeat this uh, from uh, from uh, Dylan. Dylan is working also with Janos and Katur. I mean, I mispronounced probably his name, Katur. And uh, they are working together and sharing uh, one notebook to prepare uh, like three notebooks of, for three levels. I mean, like may maybe it's uh, some uh, overlap between uh, Dylan and Mary, but I hope that uh, it will be clear in 24 hours or something. And uh, yeah, the, the, what, what is good is that we have uh, actually four persons working on this now actively. So it's like, uh, even if the, there is some redundancy in terms of work effort and information, it's good because next time when we got the like a V20, V whatever it, it will be, then it's much easier to, to dispatch this uh, over multiple persons. Yeah, we definitely need to consider this as this like learning curve for people to get up to speed and to get familiar with COVID-19 data set, you essentially need to go through what Brandon did and like that yeah. document yeah. Right pipeline yourself anyways. So again, don't consider this as a redundant work because it's all about like you will need to touch every aspect, section, article level, etc. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, so, so in the, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Anton. Also, I, I just had like a side question 
regarding spacing models, etc., I saw that you can actually run them on GPU as well. Uh, so I, Lukas, are you going to use again CPU processing or you, you know? No, it's like, I, I think because it's like those things. Okay, there's a good question, technical questions. Uh, actually that I already did with uh, Brandon's, uh, Brandon's uh, data sets, like those data frames when I use also uh, space, uh, science spacing models, I run this on CPUs. There's something like 48 CPUs and of course, uh, and those models are uh, written in uh, Cytom. So they are somehow also, uh, let's say, um, optimized to some extent, of course, because you can also run everything faster on uh, GPU. But if you have so many CPUs and the models are uh, lightweighted, so so to say, it's there's no uh, there's no no huge time difference i presume because actually it's it's also easier for me to uh, to like to build an instance for 48 cpus instead for two or three gpus because actually that what is the key is that we have a huge amount of documents and uh, actually uh, to pre process pre process or to, to like to uh, to tag or to lemmatize one document it's not so much i mean like, there's no much overhead in terms of uh, GPU, oh, CPU. I, I mean, like, okay. yeah, of course, theoretically you can talk about it, but I think in terms of pr practicality, it's. Uh, oh, this, this was actually my question. I was like, if you tried it, and the second one, is it actually give any anything? Because I'm start thinking about the essentially all of this linkage between data coming from one, etc. Like how to to make them to run quicker. And what yeah, are but the bottlenecks? It's, it's, it will cost also because, like, it's like GP, when you hire a GPU instance, it's um, it's more expensive. Uh, GPU instance. Yeah, I was thinking about running on my machine. That's ah, okay. Like, that's I mean, me, like, like, GPU for me is free. Everything else is like okay. That's all. Yeah, but crazy. the problem is actually that uh, the uh, you need really. I mean, like, what is the problem? It and it is uh, also in like. In, uh, like in the structure of Python, that iterating in Python is quite uh, slowly. And what we are doing in when you uh, run your pipeline, you iterate over each document word by word, and that's what is so slow. And each word must be uh, like it must be pushed through the uh, through the pipeline and it to be tagged, to be uh, lemmatized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think it's like. Uh, you, you need a lot of GPUs in terms of a couple of them to to match, for instance, 40 uh, CPUs. Mm, I got uh, it. At least for this uh, science spacing model, which is light, uh, light, relatively light. Because, of course, when you have this BERT model or other big stories, then, of course... Well, the, the, there was one science spacing model that was like half gig. I think okay. the rest are like small one, right? Yeah, but I I think that uh, it's it's clear like the the Brandon's notebook uh, Brandon's notebook used actually uh, this uh, large model the science space a large model, I think, yes. Uh, the question: Do we need to use like again? After like this week, I was again going through the the, the code that we essentially we were doing before. I have still a question like. Is anybody using those spacing models, you know, downstream? That's the question. Like, why are we computing all of those? Yeah, actually, uh, what? Well, okay, entities? I can. I don't know because uh, tomorrow I will have also a uh, a call with uh, Maya. I can ask uh, them. I mean, Maya's team uh, about it. But my uh, at least what I would like to do with spacing model is uh, to on the one hand uh, to put lemmas in uh, in in whoosh or uh, elastic search to see whether it works better with lemmas just this one thing and another thing is those embeddings from um, from spacey model uh, so that i can uh, use them for a semantic search so it's just two uh, application i thought about and uh, in terms of uh, semantic search it's something that i need to develop in a notebook i have a, just one notebook but it's like very primitive version of it uh, but yeah I, 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 for me just uh, like those, those embeddings from space is this a kind of baseline 
uh, I would I would like to start with, and if it does if it does uh, its job, it's okay. If not, then we can skip over to let's more sophisticated um, models like BERT, etc. But for now, it's like um, yeah, I mean like it's uh, it's it's also very easy at least now to get those embeddings from space because it's almost for free because we need this pipeline by the way and at the same time you can produce all those embeddings so yeah that's that's my point oh i agree like it's all about right creating like the pipelines and then like afterwards you just was space and now it's bird and something yeah. right and then like the on the level of pipeline it should be already i mean it's not about preliminary optimization, but it just should run like in a clean manner yeah. without that. Because right now, like again, going through what Brandon did, essentially there is so much like redundancy, pulling the data from JSON files into data frame takes a lot of kind of time. Yeah, then I think that's split that up and, and they so on. Two, three, two, two different things like me. Uh, one thing is like how you uh, write your notebook of in terms of coding. If it's a clean code, is a really a nice. I mean, like in terms of design, and then in terms of functionality, like what you want to achieve, what the kind of data you produce. That's two different questions because you can have a br brilliant idea about an an output, but then the way in which you arrive uh, at this uh, output might be very i mean like might be very suboptimal you you know what i mean yeah. or <laughs> this, uh, vice versa i mean you have a uh, your uh, your code is perfect clean but the results you get it's like it's uh, n not not usable in any way so yeah okay uh, do you have any questions like in terms of in terms of organization because we are ordered we're just three persons now and i think it's like uh, a nice talk but uh, because we are recording this uh, maybe there is some info important info to, to share with the rest of the world uh, announcement uh, so mongodb so since again we had mongodb instance running without nothing for, for quite a while but now i think slava like half of the v19 data sets all of those like json files are already almost there uh and, and it's right now it's in the, like alpha stage like we have some connectivity issues uh, but so far it looks like if you are working within like corona like our labs uh virtual machine there are no issues there but if you outside of labs then there are like some connection issues to to mongodb yeah, but uh, uh, uh -huh. so you can look at the data like select panel for announcement for user info how to connect to that mm -hmm. so another way how to pull collections like instead of reading the files all of those json files Okay, uh, Mary, do you have any questions uh, in, in terms of organization? Uh, no, no, okay. no questions okay. for me. Okay, cool. So I think that uh, exceptionally we can uh, we can uh, round off this this session uh, because uh, actually there's no much info. I'm quite uh, content and happy and uh, that that uh, that we have almost five person working persons working on on on, on the data set because like it, it, as already uh, uh, said by anton uh, it's it's good for the future that we have uh, so many people involved in this process so that next time it will be much faster and easier for us in terms of organization because then the knowledge is properly spread across uh, over multiple persons and that's the most important thing and we don't uh, we are much more flexible than with our human resources so to say uh, okay uh, so if there's no questions then uh, i would like to thank you I'm going to update this uh, recording and we hear uh, and we see each other next uh, Tuesday, the same time, the same place.
So thank you once again. Cool, sounds good. Okay. Thank you for your time, guys and girls.